Hello, good afternoon and welcome to News VT here on Metro Television. I am Desmond Okrekuda. So in this bulletin, let's look at our headlines. And coming up, the Ghana Police Service vows to clamp down on suspected ritual murders in the central region as it prepares to deploy more personnel to the region following the mysterious death of eight persons in less than 10 days in the region. The Chamber of Petroleum Consumers warns Ghanaians to brace up for more hardship as prices of petroleum products are expected to go up tomorrow. And in news from elsewhere, gunmen who abducted dozens of trained passengers in northern Nigeria releases one of the hostages who is heavily pregnant and will bring you details on that. These and many more stories coming up in this bulletin. And we're streaming live on Facebook at Metro TV Ghana and also on DSTV channel 277. Let's begin the bulletin from the central region where the Ghana Police Service says it will deploy a joint team to the central region aimed at ending the incessant killings in the region over the past week. This comes after the lifeless body of a Cape Coast Technical University student was found at Ola Estate in Cape Coast. This has pushed the death toll in the region to eight in less than eight days and we'll speak to the police but first here's a report of the happenings in the region. Last weekend, the body of a male believed to be in his 30s was dumped in a stagnant pool at Mankasim. The assembly members of the two electoral areas were called in to report the incident to the police. The assembly member, Mukhtar Hassan, described the incidents as worrying. The people of Makasim here do not know what is happening. What is going on is serious. The police should also do something about it. That was the fourth body they found in the enclave in a week. Some residents express fear of what is happening in the community. We get scared when we send our children. When we are even in our homes, we are scared. We cannot even go to church in the evening. We plead with the police of Mankasim to come to our aid. On Wednesday, 40-year-old fetish priest Kwesi Tando allegedly shot himself, his wife and son dead at Enya Abonwinum in the Jumako Enya Esiam district of the central region. The incident is said to have happened at 12 midnight at Wednesday, May 11, 2022. A brother and a sister of the deceased wife gave their account. <laughs> I came home tired and was trying to find something to eat when my brother knocked on the door and told me that my sister and her husband were in a heated argument. He informed me that my in-law had picked up a gun and locked the family indoor. So I also went to another in-law of mine to borrow his gun to save my sister. When I got to the house, I met the police. They told me that my sister, one child and her husband are dead. The Jumaka District Police Commander Chief Superintendent Stephen Tete spoke to pressmen after they got to the scene. We realized that this man, the, the man has shot himself in the head and one of the, 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 the sons, who is about 14 years. So two, the man and the son died. But there were other uh, three children. Uh, the first son, who is uh, about 17 years. Uh, had locked the other uh, uh, younger uh, uh, children, one uh, nine years and uh, one six, in a room, and used uh, a, a chair to place the place so the man couldn't get access to, to them. Yesterday, the Central Regional Police Command has commanded investigations into the murder of 24-year-old Nana Amma Clark, a level 300 marketing student of the Cape Coast Technical University. She was murdered at Ola Estate in Cape Coast. 
The lifeless body of the lady was found at 9 p.m. on Friday, May 13th, 2022, with her private parts removed. It is suspected that her missing parts may have been used to perform rituals, but the police are yet to confirm that. As they say, they have started investigations. <laughs> This is how she was positioned. We thought she had been knocked down by a car. Then we noticed she was bleeding between her thighs. When we go to the scene, the way her sleepers and wig were set aside, it appeared to be intentional. We found her phone and called some of the numbers on it. We later found out that she was a national service personnel only at Elmina. According to the public relations officer of the Central Regional Police Command, DSP Irene Opong, the mother of the deceased has been contacted and the body has been deposited at the Cape Coast Technical Hospital. Police proceeded to the scene and found the body of an unknown person aged about 24 years lying naked with her private parts cut off and bruises over the body. Body has been deposited at the Cape Coast Teaching Hospital pending further investigation. Developments The disease has been identified as Nana Amaklag. There has so far been eight deaths in the region in less than 10 days, which has got citizens worried. Now, let's get to the central region and get some more reactions with respect to yesterday's killing. And uh, Obobi Onisiforos is a journalist in the region with ATLFM. Hello, good afternoon, Obobi. Uh, can you describe to us the mood of the people of Cape Coast um, after the killing of the student of uh, CCTU? Yeah, good afternoon, um, this one. I think that uh, when it comes to the uh, here in Cape Coast, uh, it's, the, the mood is quite solemn here. Everyone usually would, uh, by least by now, you would have seen some sort of um, holiday mood. Usually, if you've stayed in Cape Coast for quite a while, you, you'd reckon that uh, Sundays are really days where I would like to use as a chilling day for the people of Cape Coast. But you take a look at the mood and then this, this one, the place is, is, is totally silent, especially that particular enclave where the, the, the whole issue happened, that Ola stretch. And you take a look at um, why it happened, it's quite a bit of distance to some of these, um, uh, let, let, let me put it, these resorts or these uh, holy, holiday places um, along the beachside. And we have numerous of them uh, on that particular stretch. So that's one, all you know, that's the mood. Mm. There's some sort of there's some sort of fear and panic among um, residents. Others are also worried, and others are also asking themselves several questions: that what is Cape Coast or what is happening to Cape Coast? You reckon that uh, a year ago we 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 had an incident where someone was shot dead in his in his home here in Cape Coast. So yeah. these conversations have have become rife, and there are conversations going on that um, is Cape Coast really safe? So that's one. That's that's the mood here in Cape Coast. Well, the police um, says they've started investigations. I mean, as you talk to people on the ground, people who actually got to see what happened, what have you been picking from them? Well, so this one, um, the, the usual thing you'd hear from most of the people we spoke to, or I spoke with was that they initially thought that it was an accident scene. So um, I, I spoke with some people within the vicinity, and then they said that, well, when they initially saw it, uh, they, just, they just saw that, it was one of those random cases of um, a vehicle knocking someone down. But something prompted them because initially, if, if, if someone had been knocked down by a car, there are certain signs you'd see blood spilled all over. But they, they realized that no, the blood was trickling down within a certain, um, uh, uh, let's say, a certain measure, as within a certain uh, particular style. And then that drew the attention that no, it could be beyond what they were thinking. So they drew closer and they realized that such a thing had happened. The usual thought is that uh, it's possible that uh, the alleged incident could be a case of a ritual murder. But that's the stance the police are, are mm. currently doing their investigations. And we are waiting for um, the results that, 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 that they'll bring to the main public.
On social media, people are complaining about, you know, uh, ritual murder and talking about the fact that the, the, the municipality or Cape Coast has been infiltrated by these money uh, rituals or young guys who seek to be rich overnight. Do you really see them, you know, in town and, you know, how, how is the mood like towards people like that? So there is a usual perception that um, when you find a young guy between the ages of 20 to 27, riding in some of these uh, Porsche cars, uh, Honda, BM, BM and the likes, even 4x4 and all that fresh. And these are fresh cars, and usually white. So when you see a lot of young guys riding in, that, in, th in those types of cars, the, thing, the, the thoughts that comes to mind is that these are ritual, or these are ritualists, or these are Sakawa people, as we, we, we term it. Um, they, are, they, are, they, they seem... Those caliber of people seem to be be, be around um, within certain parts of 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 of, of Cape Coast. Uh, yes, people are complaining about that. But um, the issue also, what makes it a bit tricky, is that uh, if you're, you've not caught them hands on, so it's difficult to predict. But usually, usually the conversation that 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 goes on is that okay. So once, as a young guy, 20, 22, 23, 24, you are riding in a fresh BMW, latest one, 2020, 2021. Then, if, if, if we don't really know your background, and it's possible that you could be indulging in any of these um, Sakawa or uh, ritual activities that is giving you that money to, to buy such a, a, an expensive vehicle. Okay, thank you very much, Obobi. We'll come back to you when needed for some more updates. So that was Obobi Onisiforos. He's a journalist in Cape Coast with ATLFM. Away from that story, the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers Ghana has predicted an upward adjustment in the prices of petroleum products from tomorrow. In a statement, the Chambers uh, reviewed the prices of petroleum, diesel and liquefied petroleum gas will go up by 5 2 and 4% respectively. We will hear from the Chamber, but first, here is a desk report on the projections. According to a release from the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers Ghana, prices of petroleum products will see a rise starting 16th May 2022. Per their projections, COPEC predicts petrol will go up by 5%, while diesel is predicted to see a 2% increase and LPG is predicted to rise by 4%. According to the energy think tank, the expected increase in fuel prices is due to the falling dollar exchange rate and increase in prices of processed fuel and also an increase in crude prices by 3% per barrel. Crude prices are said to be at a current average of $107.68 per barrel, resulting in $1,138.23 per metric ton. Diesel is selling at $1,159.98 per metric ton. Considering the current exchange rate of $1 to 7 cities 80 pesos and a 15 peso per liter tax still in place, petrol is expected to sell at 9.990 Ghana cities and diesel at 11.350 Ghana cities. This brings the average price of petrol and diesel to 10.670 cities. Okay, so let's get some reactions and we are joined on phone by the head of research and training at the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers, Ghana, Benjamin Insia, for more on this. Hello, good afternoon, sir. Thank you for joining us. What is the reason for the increase this time around? Me. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, from COPEX uh, perspective, uh, there are two uh, factors uh, causing this uh, price uh, increment. Uh, one is uh, international uh, market prices of uh, the various products, especially the finished product. And then a slight uh, appreciation of the CD against the dollar. Uh, for example, if you look at uh, this window, current window, and the next window, which begins from uh, tomorrow, uh, the CD appreciated by 0.25%. Uh, and then uh, the international market price of the various products per metric ton, for example, diesel uh, went up by about 8%. Uh, no, petrol rather, petrol went up by 8%. Uh, diesel is around 2%, and then LPG around 4%. Uh, so because of uh, the hikes, of the product on the international market, it means that reflectively, uh, prices locally will also have to stage, and that is what we are, we are going to observe uh, beginning tomorrow. Okay, what are your projections for the end of the month? Will we cross the dreaded 10 cities mark on the prices of petrol? 
So uh, our expectations begins from tomorrow, which is the second window of uh, May, uh, to the last day of May. Uh, so uh, beginning uh, tomorrow, uh, averagely uh, petrol will go for about nine Ghana cities and 99 pesos per liter. Uh, whilst we shall have a stable price of diesel, I think diesel will go up, up about only 1.08, which is about maybe 2% 2, 2 and that also means that average diesel will be sold around 11 Ghana to 35 pesos per liter. So we, we shall observe a stability in the price of uh, diesel. And then LPG will also increase to uh, about uh, 10 Ghana cities and 47 pesos per kilogram. Uh, that is also uh, about uh, uh, 4 or 5% uh, increment uh, compared to this current window. So the, the three products uh, that we normally uh, predict, uh, petrol, is going to see an increment, a very large increment beginning tomorrow. Uh, diesel is going to see a stable uh, price. Maybe some of the uh, OMCs may not even change their prices. And LPG is also going to see uh, an upward adjustment, a very large upward adjustment. Well, can we not do anything about the situation? Uh, I mean, the increments have been going, or can't we do anything about it? We can as a nation, if, if we own that uh, there are challenges in this, in this particular sector to resolve. Uh, I think that uh, over the years, we've not actually own that there are problems or there are challenges. Uh, ownership of challenges also means that you prefer certain solutions to them. One is that, uh, how do we deal with the, 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 the depreciation of the CD? I think as a, as a state between the Ministry of Finance and the Bank of Ghana should be a, have a coordinating team in terms of putting certain interventions in place to make sure that the CD appreciates against the dollar. If the CD appreciates against the dollar, the uh, price of petroleum products uh, will decline. Uh, two, we also have to uh, look at making sure that tour works. If uh, Tamar refinery starts refining our products, I think the price of petroleum products locally will also decline, will also drop uh, drastically. So these are uh, the basic things that we think that the government does. Uh, the petroleum consumer locally will, will have a, a sigh of relief where prices will drop. But if government doesn't do any of them, uh, petroleum consumer locally should continue to expect a price increase at the local front. Okay, thank you very much, Benjamin Siam, for talking to us this afternoon. So, um, we're expecting some upward adjustments in the prices of uh, LPG, uh, petrol, and also diesel. Let's do some politics now. And the chair and leader of the Convention's People's Party, CPP, Nana Akosia Frempoma Sapon Kumakuma, is charging the government to intervene on behalf of Ghanaians concerning the increment of tariffs as proposed by the Ghana Water Company Limited and the Electricity Company of Ghana. There should be no increase at this time. We have already increased transportation. That one is private sector. There's not, not much government can do about the truck truck driver when the, the petrol prices have gone up. There's not much one can do about the woman selling the tomatoes, selling tomatoes, one piece of tomatoes for two cities, because tomato is not there on the market, and whenever she, she brings the tomatoes to the market, she has to pay exorbitant prices for bringing them there. So I can understand if government doesn't have much control over the increase of these items, but not over the increase of, um, what do you call it, uh, electricity and water. These are basic and government is in charge. They must subsidize. If somebody is paying 50 Ghana a month for water, that person will be paying over 50, 217. There's already the e levy. E levy, we are trying to absorb what, because the E levy principle simply means that at each point in time, money in my pocket will fall to government's pocket. It's as simple as that. No matter where the money is coming from, let's not go to tariffs now. Let's thank God we still, government is still in charge of electricity and water. You can't handle the tomato seller. You can't handle the garage seller. You can't handle the truck or driver because you don't have that many transportation that is mass transport for government. But you can handle electricity and water. Do it that way. Tombo is the only thing that we have had since when? The 60s, since in Kuma's time. This is CPP. Now we've had all these things that are supposed to have come in. So much money. And we are still getting electricity problem. It's not like even the electricity is going to solve anything. And we are now talking about 148% or is it 140 something percent increase. I think it's a joke. Nobody, no Ghanaian should say, we should refuse this one. This is something that we should not accept. So watching News Beat here on Metro Television. We're taking a break. When we come back, we'll do some more stories. Please do stay.
Welcome back from the break. And uh, private university colleges say it may become infeasible for them to charter within the timelines provided by the Ghana Tertiary Education Commission as stipulated by the Education Regulatory Bodies Act, Act 1023, with two years left for them to become independent universities or cease to exist. They say it can only take governmental intervention to save them. There's more in this report. Per the Education Regulatory Bodies Act 2020, Act 1023, all university colleges are mandated to wean themselves from their mother universities by the end of 2023, least cease to exist. With two years already gone by, some of the private university colleges say without government support, they may not be able to meet the deadline. President of JE University College, in an interaction with the media during the 11th congregation of the university, bemoaned the lack of support from government to private universities who are struggling to survive. He said it becomes difficult to retain their lecturers when they attain higher certificates such as MPhil or PhD since they opt for public universities due to salary demands. The president proposed for government to assist in paying of lecturers in return for a share of profits made by private universities. He recounted how presidents of other university colleges at a recent workshop organized by the Ghana Tertiary Education Commission also lamented on how frustrating it has become in their quest to migrate to autonomous universities. He fears they may have to cease operations at the elapse of the deadline and thus wants government to support the university colleges considering their contribution to higher education in the country. We are working with the government and I believe the government also knows what he, he should do. You see, we should not be telling the government that it's becoming difficult for us to exist. The government knows what is happening, but I don't know why they want to support the public universities and then ask the private universities to. Because after all, we are. If 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 it has to do with the uh, fact that maybe the owners of the private universities are running it as a business and they want or, or they believe that the profit is going to the owners. I hope you understand. Then I think they should also try and then assist us in a manner, you see, that if the government should, if uh, there should be the need even to pay part of the profit, even apart from the taxes that we pay. Meanwhile, Dr. Christiane Hammond, in an earlier speech read on behalf of the Vice Chancellor of the University of Education, Winiba, Professor Mauto Avoke, mentioned that the UEW will support its affiliate university colleges to ensure that they successfully become independent. She charged the graduates to be skillful on the job market as well as preserve good personal images. And we, the University of Education, Winiba, is readily available to provide our unwavering support to ensure that this dream comes to a reality. And the Catholic Metropolitan Archbishop of Cape Coast, Most Reverend Charles Gabriel Palmer Bacco, has called for a review of the free senior high school policy for further deliberations. The Archbishop was speaking during the launch of Accra Academy history book titled Accra Blair, the history of the Accra Academy from Jamestown to Bubuashi. The 728-page history book titled Accra Kabeleo, the history of the Accra Academy from Jamestown to Bubuashi, presents both a visual and literal history of the school over nine decades. It recounts the aspirations and achievements of successive administrations of the school and how they overcame the challenges of their time and influenced the character of their students. And you know, the perception is that Akaka is a big school. So I went to type in the Akaka and zero, nothing came out. So I said, ah, Akaka is such a big school and no representation. And I have to tell you that in those days, editing on Wikipedia was, I would like to say, a nightmare. Very, very technical. You know, not like you have it today. Today it's easy. They have like a, a, a web form. It, you have to use code very difficult and 
<laughs> I was frustrated because you put something there, they will delete it, they say it, it, you have to sign sources, a lot of things. But eventually, you know, I, I succeeded in doing that. Congratulating the school for such feats, Deputy Minister of Education, Reverend Intim Fojo, added that the Free Senior High School is a game changer. So the challenge we are dealing with goes beyond access. Between 2017 and now, the government through the Free SHS policy has been able to make it possible for nearly 2.2 million students to access education. Many of these may not have had the opportunity for higher learning if not for this policy. So it is a great thing that we all must continue to co collaborate, to consolidate the gains, that no child is left behind, the child of the poor, the child of the rich, all having access. But it's also a question of relevance. The Catholic Metropolitan Archbishop of Cape Coast, Most Reverend Charles Gabriel Palmer Buckle, during his submission, called for a review of the Free Senior High School policy. And I will leave it with the minister. It is now time that we have a stakeholders meeting to review the free education I support it 100% or 110%. I do. And it is high time I want to leave something, my dear friends, and add it as my, one of my last points, is that the free education should not give money to parents and to Ghanaians to indulge in frivolities. Because parents have forgotten that they should be paying for the education of their children. They have devolved that onto government and are blaming government. But we expect to see parents collaborate and contribute their share to the total education of their children. The children should be holistically educated, not just academically, holistically. And now let's do some other stories. The Accra Technical University has received a refurbished ICT lab. There's more in the following report. The inauguration of the ICT Flex Lab follows a memorandum of understanding signed between Accra Technical University and AFOS Foundation for Entrepreneurial Development Corporation. The ICT Flex Lab is expected to build the capacities of both staff and students through virtual and in-person trainings in the areas of basic and advanced Excel, visual programming and coding in Python. Vice Chancellor of the University, Professor Samuel Neodai, called for good maintenance of the facility. The project is that is thus geared towards harmonizing and harnessing the educational and fourth industrial revolution benefits of improving digital capacity in two main disciplines, namely data science and business intelligence within the university through online and face-to-face -face sessions. Let's do our best to take good care of this facility and secure it against theft. 50 students are expected to benefit from the program on a pilot basis till December 2023. Uh, we are still in contact with each and everyone who goes through the program and we continue having programs for them where they can take part and, and still stay connected. So it's not just a six months training program, it's much more than that. And with the network that they're able to build throughout that program, they will continue to have um, benefits from it for a long, long while. Some students and staff of the university were excited about the program. The students currently in ATU are not getting this kind of education. So in terms of data science, in terms of business intelligence, in terms of certain software, which is very important for industry now, our students are not getting it. So this benefit is coming to bridge a certain gap, which is very, very important in terms of what they will need when they go out there. In fact, I believe that this program would bridge the gap between education and employment, because it is imperative that whilst you are in school, you learn some skills that would help you so that after school you would not be found wanting. That even if there is no job out there or even if the government is not able to provide you with jobs, you would have the relevant skills that is required to fend for yourself and for everything that is needed for you to make a living. The project is supported by the Special Initiative on Training and Job Creation funded by the German Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development. 
Council member of the Federation of Persons with Disability, Emma Lillian Bruce Line, has urged government to prioritize data on persons with special needs. According to her, though some data exist, they do not reflect the exact happenings on the ground, and this is very critical to the realization of the sustainment of the Sustainable Development Goals. Came up during an engagement by National Development Planning Commission with persons with special needs and the vulnerable groups as part of efforts to compile a detailed and all-inclusive report on the progress of the Sustainable Development Goals. The engagement was to solicit input into the final 2022 Voluntary National Review Report on the SDGs ahead of the country's second presentation in July 2022. SDGs National Coordinator at the National Development Planning Commission, Dr. Richard Osei Bofa, pledged that these views will be put to action. Because sometimes the figures don't tell the story, but the story should tell as more about the figures that we are seeing. So that was done across eight regions uh, in Ghana. And some of the issues that we went to discuss were around issues of wash, water sanitation. And uh, we also focus on discussion on person disabilities and see how, how they are able to assess certain, certain facilities and how some of the challenges they face. So that will also be highlighted today. Speaking at the meeting, a council member of the Federation of Persons with Disability, Emma Lillian Bruce Lyle, said achieving the SDGs is possible, adding data on persons with special needs must be prioritized. We appeal to government to support, to give us the support to be able to collect data. When we collect data, we will be able to plan effectively for us. If they like, they should give it to the statistical department who will collect it and keep it. If they have been able to get 8% of us being disabled or persons with disability, obviously, if they are given the funding to collect data or throughout this country, we will get somewhere so that in planning, the person who is planning for the able-bodied people will also think of the persons with disability, especially the, the different categorization of disability. Governance Lead and Program Specialist at the UNDP, Edward Amprachum, commended government on steps being taken to attain the SDGs. As the UNCT develops the new generation country program for Ghana, we are committed to having a cross-sectoral leave no one behind working group to ensure that the core programming principles of leaving no one behind is reflected across all our work as a UN country team. Scavengers have been living off picking waste materials for recycling for many years in Ghana. Although the business comes with a lot of hazards, the unemployment situation in the country has given them no alternative to turn to. Some of them have been sharing with us how they go about getting the scraps and they are able to cater for their families. Watch this report. Scavengers, popularly referred to as scrap dealers, are people who pick up waste from refuse dams and people's homes for recycling. Many venture into such businesses to endure the high rate of unemployment and widespread economic hardship in the country. In an interview with Metro TV's news team, some of the scavengers shared with us the pitfalls in the business and how they are able to cater for their families. This, so if uh, the boys, they bring, you go there three weeks or four weeks, again, for car loot, a cargo company, I'll, I'll get uh, my profits more. That will take care of my family for that. Abbas, who deals in scraps, said he sells the scraps to recycling companies after which he pays the boys working for him. He lives on whatever remains with his wife and child. He however fears government is trying to take away the only job he's become good at. Last year, I told you, I suffer. But now, 
I'll be working Simon. I de Marlin Simon Simon. I de Marlin Simon Simon. I de pray to make a go like that. Because I de fear to maybe if the government will can carry new order again. If a new order come uh, the problem can be that. Osman, who sells PBC material used for pipes, said he has three children and a wife to cater for. Adding he has to endure the challenges associated with the work for the sake of his children's education. I have choice. I have to struggle for the sake of my children. I need them to go to school. I need them to look better so that maybe when they grow, they can help me. Fusini, also a scrap dealer, said although he has a senior high school certificate, finding a job in Ghana has become impossible. Anytime I, I, like I wake up in the morning, I take my tricycle. After taking a trash call, I go around. I'm a refuse collector. So if I take up the, the refuse, the, the small scraps that are inside, I'll take them separately. So if I take them separately, if I went to the, like maybe dump the refuse or offload the refuse, I'll take off. Because there's no capital, there's no money, I can't fed up. And my child to have to get like get him a good education. So I'm trying my best. Even if I didn't make it. I'm supposed to work hard for my kid to make it. So I don't want to end up like my parents or something. Yeah. We're taking another break now. We'll be back shortly. Please do stay. Welcome back. Now let's talk about the People's National Convention where the youth organizer Mark Ewosi Akon has called for unity among party members to be able to resolve all outstanding issues which are prohibiting the progress of the party. Speaking to Metro News, the youth leader said activities of the party have come to a standstill due to issues with the leadership. His comments come at the back of the sacking of the 2020 flag bearer of the party, David Aposera, and the national chairman, Moses Daniba. The PNC, for me, um, it seems to be one of the brilliant and the traditional political parties that apart from the NPP and the NDC, the youth of Ghana should look at rallying support behind it. So that at least, if we are not really satisfied with what um, policies the NDCs and the NPPs are bringing on board, at least the PNC should bring an alternative that will be a sort of looking at solving the problems of, of the, the, the ordinary Ghanaian, especially the youth. But finding ourselves in this legal term or have really derailed the activities of the party. And I must be, be very frank that it is really not helping. It has, it has, it has created a stalk in the party as far as the youth is concerned. And actually, no party activity is running under, under my, my umbrella as a youth organizer. You don't necessarily expect TV people to think the same way. Obviously, one may go the other way. But it is for the collective interest of the group that do we disagree all times or we disagree to agree. But I believe that if we have a common vision and we have a common agenda, irrespective of your background, irrespective of your view, you bring it together. We are a collective people, that's what we call it democracy. You understand? It is not an autocracy where one person decides where to go or what to do. It is democracy. We are open up to listen to views of other people. So if you're open up to views of other people, then of course, yes, you should be able to come together to do things and run programs that would bring better fortunes to the People's National Convention. Mark Ewusiako believes despite all these challenges, the party is on course to help win the 2024 general elections. It is quite unfortunate that it is happening this way. But if you could recall, before the MPP came to power, they went for their national congress and elected their national executives, including um, former chairman of Fuku and then their former general secretary of Japan. And it was just within you know, that time they had their issues, went to court, disagreements, different factions broke in and all that. But at the end of the day, they were able to put the house in order and wrestle power from the NDC. We know the NDC too have also gone through a series of misunderstandings. And it is not anything new when it comes to the political settings. The only important thing is we've been able to put our heads together and churn our energies together as well to iron out our differences and then push forward as a political party. 
Up next, we do some business stories. And in business, the Executive Secretary for Importers and Exporters Association of Ghana, Samson Awingobet, has blamed the current high cost of doing business in the country on the Ghana Union of Traders Association for endorsing what he calls unwarranted and insensitive policies towards trading from the government. Seven years ago, a government was here, to, and any time the government introduced policies that the business community realized that it was in the detriment to the business community, we stood shoulder to shoulder, we stood on our ground, we joined, that was when we even formed what we call the first ever that we formed what we call Joint Business Consultative Forum, where it comprises the Ghana Union of Traders, Guta, Importers and Exporters Association, Food and Beverages Association, Ghana Institute of Free Forwarders, and other asso allied associations to fight the government at the time. And it was, we are in both public and private. And at the point, the Guta president currently who used to be, I remember vividly, used to be uh, the, the national organizer of Guta. Then we go to Okase, Okatuma, and we said they should close our shops. To the extent that even sometimes we get the foreign company like the malls to also join us by closing our shops just to register our pleasure, our displeasure to the government and to let the government adhere, adhere to our pleas. Uh, six, seven years down the lane, six years down the lane, I must say, this government came six, seven years, we are almost in the seventh, and in the seventh year, we are in the uh, May now, we have even read. Uh, uh, if we were to June, I would say half year of the seventh year, and and we have had policies from from uh, we abolish the abusoka spare parts. When they come to implementation, the government does say abusoka should come and tell them which is spare part, which is not spare part. And we had calls, even including you, the media, some asking right. me that if the government abolish taxes, why do we people go to buy spare parts and the spare parts was still high? Okay. We saw the three percent flat rate that was reversed, where the group in important exporters and uh, and wholesalers and distributors and some of us took our ground and said no. That was going to be in the treatment. We saw what the Bank of Ghana is tasking customers to report to the central bank any suspicious or unapproved charges from their financial institutions. In June 2021, the Bank of Ghana warned commercial banks and specialized deposit taking institutions in Ghana to abolish unfair charges in the banking sector. In a statement, the Bank of Ghana noted that. There are seven charges being implemented by banks and SDIs which are deemed to be unfair, inappropriate and detrimental to the financial inclusion agenda and the protection of customers' interest. According to a recent statement which seeks to update Guineans on the abolition of unfair fees, charges and other practices, the central bank is tasking customers that are being charged to report any suspicious or unapproved charges from their financial institutions. It is unclear why the BOG is reiterating this warning barely a year after the initial one. But in this statement, customers are being urged to assess their needs before subscribing to additional services such as transaction alerts and internet banking services which may attract fees and charges on their accounts. The central bank is asking customers to always insist on their rights and report any breach to them. If financial institutions charge any fee when customers go to withdraw money from their own account over the counter. Furthermore, the statement stresses that it is unlawful for a financial institution to quote its interest rate on a monthly, daily or other basis apart from the annual basis and as such customers should report such a breach to the central bank. That's all for business. Up next, we do sports. And in sports, defending champions of the MTNFA Cup, Accra Hearts of Folk, are through to the finals of this year's competition after beating Dreams FC 3-2 at the Accra Sports Stadium in the semi-final game. Let's watch the highlights and later some reaction from the coaches. Dreams FC Simba and does the opening goal. Sylvester Simba puts Dreams FC ahead. Look at how high their line has been, the number of bodies they've gone forward. The genuine boy in goals have the play well, and Atifuk trying to control the game and play out from the back. It's on Sabotri gives away the ball to Simba. Glasson Awaku, he's got York in the middle. Banya is calling for it. Yes, he finds him. Good save from Kumsing, and that's the equalizer. Benjamin York brings the Fobians on level pegging. For Simba's crossing, Simba delivers. 
and he comes out, doesn't get so much on it, but eventually is out of the house of 18 yard box. Rustum Senok by whistles for the end of the first half here. So Sassabok on the move now. Here is Siraj onto the pass from Ibrahim now. Siraj trying to look for a free Abania. What a goal! Daniel Afriya Barnier makes it 2-1 for the Fabians. An amazing finish from Barnier. Today he's stepping out and helping them in defending. Corsa with a true ball. And they get a third goal. It is Suraj presented with a gift. And it's a welcome. With Azabok's third goal. Because if you're not there, the goal doesn't happen. Suraj. Luckily, he gets the third goal for Hearts of Folk and maybe put the game beyond Dreams FC now in Hearts. Muntari's ball blocked now. Dreams take over. Ali will save. Here is Simba Sylvester. He puts it onto the path of Kakari. It's Kakari. And Kakari is over the bar. That was so close. The Phobians are through to the finals of the MTN FA Cup for the second. And qualified for the finals. Thank you very much. As I said it uh, earlier on, I know that it's going to be a very difficult game because beating Dreams in uh, two times, it won't be easy. They have a good team and tactically they are very good. But uh, I'll congratulate my boys for listening to instructions and after we considered, I think they came in strongly to score Dreams. So I really appreciate it. Yeah, what do you mean? Such things at times to position yourself well, you could see that the player wanted to get close to the opponent who, who has the ball but they were try they are slipped over there so that cost us a lot so after the goal score i told them to be composed themselves they should play their normal game i think that it will come that's all for sports up next we do entertainment And in entertainment, American rapper Kendrick Lamar has been having some fun in Ghana. He visited the skate park that was created by um, the late Virgil Abloh and later was found in Jamestown enjoying some boxing action. He later had an interaction with Black Sharif and here are some sights and sounds of his visit. <laughs> And definitely Kendrick Lamar having some fun times in Ghana. And uh, now to the African Movie Viewers' Choice Awards. And Ghanaian film director and actor Pascal Aka has won the best soundtrack at the 2022 edition of the African Movie Viewers' Choice Awards, which took place last night at the Echo Hotel and Suits in Nigeria. The eighth edition was held after a two-year hiatus of the awards. Pascal Aka was on the soundtrack for the movie together with songstress Raquel. The award came with a cash award of 1 million Naira. Gold Coast Lounge, since its release in 2019, has won about 16 awards. That's all for entertainment. Up next is international news. And the gunmen who abducted dozens of trained passengers in northern Nigeria have released one of the hostages, a heavily pregnant woman. And she was among those kidnapped in March when armed men blew up the railway and attacked a busy train traveling between the capital Abuja and Kaduna. At least nine people were killed. It is not yet clear exactly how many people were kidnapped, but pictures released last month by the gunmen showed at least 62 captives. Kaduna State Commissioner for Internal Security Samuel Arizwan has confirmed to the BBC and other media outlets that the release of the hostages should be given um, some attention and also they need to go for medical checkup. And that's it for the bulletin this hour. Many thanks for watching. I am Desmond Okreku. We'll be back at 7 p.m. with Newsnight. Do enjoy the rest of our programs. Bye-bye.